Building a house in Vanuatu is like lighting a fire. It's something that everyone learns how to do regardless of their age. There are no standards, rules, or permits for locals when they build. If you want to build a house and you own the land, and sometimes even if you don't own the land, you just go ahead and start building. Each house consists of a foundation that is dug by hand, some steel rod in the dirt where the cement will be poured onto, and then walls of cement blocks or tin. The roof is either a tin roof or a natural natagura roof, which the islanders often leave themselves or buy locally for one to two dollars a piece. It was Saturday. The sun beating down on our tin roof was making the inside of the house stuffy, and we didn't have any particular plans for the day. But we did hear someone mention that one of our friends from Melimat, a village down the road, was building himself a house. Patrice was one of our friends and workers. On regular days, Patrice's daughter would go off to school, and his little boy Trevor would balance precariously on the handlebars of his dad's new bike as they rode to work together. Each day, Patrice arrived at 7 a.m. and worked hard in the hot sun until nightfall. While he worked, little Trevor amused himself or played for hours in the dirt outside with my own little boys. At lunchtime, Patrice would join Trevor and they'd sit underneath the shade of the mango tree and share a coconut or some popo. Saturday and Sunday were the two days that Patrice got off work. Sunday was devoted entirely to God, and that left only Saturday to tend his garden, hunt or fish for extra food, and do anything extra that he might need to take care of his little family. When I found out that Patrice was building a house today, we decided to see if he needed any help. My oldest and I hopped onto the quad and took a ride to check up on the progress of the project. Along the way, we discovered a group of boys and men filling up empty cement bags with hot black sand from the beachfront. Since sand mining was still legal at the time, it was the closest and easiest place to find sand that they would take to their houses. This sand would be one of the main ingredients in Patrice's foundation, as well as the walls for his new house. Our girls were excited to join the crew of enthusiastic workers, which consisted of friends and cousins, and quickly grabbed some shovels and headed to the beach. The local boys from the village thought it was hysterical that the girls thought they could work with them, but they didn't dare say anything. What they didn't realize is that this family of girls had grown up on the farm, and they could work just as hard and fast as any boy could. We spent the morning shoveling bags of sand and loading them up into the truck, where they were transported to Patrice's village along bumpy gravel roads. Even little Zabie insisted on helping, and there was laughter and fun all around as we finished up. Just as we delivered the last load, the men at the worksite were pouring the cement over top of the foundation, a crudely dug hole with rusty bits of steel rods scattered across the floor. Later the walls, and finally the roof, were added to Patrice's house. After just two months, his house would now be ready for him to move into with his mother and father and two children. The proud way that Patrice showed us his house when it was finished was evidence of the magic that happens when you make something with your own two hands. Although the house was simple, it had something that none of my houses have ever had. It was a symbol of absolute sacrifice and love. Father charged with the responsibility of providing and protecting his little family and taking something as small and insignificant as sand from the beach and making it into the very thing that his family would live in, probably for the rest of their lives, reminds me that small things become great when done with love.